All right, let's go fishing today. Let's do this. to the AC. What is up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Mungie Fishing. Um, today was really hot, so I did not go fishing today. I just could not handle the heat. Uh, I work out in this heat all day long, so figured my day off, I'd take the day off. Um, but I have had a request on showing what gear I use. Um, they want to know what gear I use, what bait I use, how I tie my hooks, my weights. <clears throat> so I figured I'd take advantage of this day since it's just too hot for me to go out and go fishing. Uh, to go ahead and let you guys know how I set my stuff up. Um, if you haven't noticed already, I've got some apparel set up, some my hat. Uh, I'm trying to find a way to get this added to my store. Um, they said that some kind of shading or something I did on it isn't good enough for them to embroider it, but this was another company, so I might just have two stores set up. One for hats and then the other for my shirts and stuff like that. So anyway, we'll start off with um, <clears throat> hooks. Um, so I start off with circle hooks. And these are Mustad Demon Perfect circle hooks. Uh, I use an A-dot. And this was a pack of 100. And I think I paid like... I don't know, 30 bucks, 20 bucks, somewhere around there. I'll post them all in the description of the video so that way you guys can know what I get. But this is an ADOT circle hook. And uh, it's a pretty nice hook. So, what I use on these is I have two ways I set these up. And one of them is uh, use a long steel leader. I think that's what these are. They're just steel cable, but I don't like to use these too much just because the wire is real stiff. So floating in the water uh, can probably weigh it down. I'm not 100% sure on how it works, but basically all this does is this little clip right here. You undo this clip right here like such. Kind of pry it open a little bit. You grab your hook, set it around, set it in there, and you re-clasp like that. And uh, that's how it works. So you got your hook all the way down to your swivel. And uh, I think that's about 18 inches, 2 feet close to it. So this is what I use. Um, when I'm in a hurry, if I snap a line and I need to hurry up and get a line out, I'll just have these pre-ready with a hook on it and just slide away, tie it, and we're good to go. Now, what I really like to do is I will get some string. Uh, <clears throat> I'll get a 50-pound test. Uh, this is Epco OmniFlex. It doesn't really matter what brand. Um, but I'll, I always use mono for my leaders. The reason why I use mono is it, it can handle abrasion and rocks and all that a lot easier than braid can. Because braid, if you're around rocky areas like I am around the dam and all that stuff, uh, it can tear up your braid pretty quick and then you'll lose fish that way. So I'm going to show you all how I tie a snail knot. Uh, basically, I'll take a leader. doesn't matter what size you want. It's Just keep in mind that when your weight is on the bottom on this end, your bait's going to either be sitting or if you're in flow, it's going to be flopping over here. So how much flop you want is how much uh, strength you want to leave. So if you want it to be flopping like crazy like this, leave a lot. If you don't want it to flop much, it'll just sit in one spot right there and kind of flop. So what I would do 
probably no smaller than 12 inches. Um, so, but what I normally do is I'll grab about two feet of line and nail clippers work really good. Not on braid, just on line. So now I've got my 12 inches, 12 inches, that's like two feet. Um, so I grab my hook, I've got my hook and I like to get the string and the side that the actual hook is on is where I'll grab my string and go through the hole from that side and then I push this down up against the metal and I'll hold that right there. And then you just grab this end, push them back this way, wrap it around so that it wraps. And I do it seven times because seven is a lucky number. So there's four, five, six, seven. Put your finger on there to hold it. And you grab this other end of the line and you push it through the front of the hole also. And you just push it through. And then you pull tight. <clears throat> and there you have a snail knot. And this isn't even a knot. Basically, it's just pressurized on the hook. So as you pull, there's just a lot of pressure. So there's no actual bending points or breaking points. Um, and the cool thing about this is if you want to take this off, change your hook so your hook broke, uh, you can just push this top part back out and unwrap it and you're done. You don't have to be sitting here kind of trying to unfold it or untie it or whatever. So that's one end. <clears throat> and then on this other end here, I like to go to, I have a store here called uh, Dunham's and I didn't even know they had fishing stuff until I went with my fiance the other day. And um, anyway, swivels, uh, 89 cents. Uh, didn't, they didn't say a weight, like how much strength they can handle, but I got the big ones they had that were on sale for 89 cents. And uh, how I tie my knot on these is I'll put the string through one side, I'll put my finger, uh, basically set it between my thumb and my middle finger, and then I put my finger between. And then with my other hand, I'll twist it three times. One. Let's move the hook out of the way. So one twist, two twist, three twist. So it'll look like this. And I grab that end and I put it through that loop I just made. Okay. Then you made another loop here, right here. So you grab this and you push it back into that loop right there and you hold it and then at that point you pull it kind of get it wet a little bit so if you have water with you or spit on it just get it kind of wet so it slides on there and then you just work it tight just like that Grab your clippers, clip the excess off, and now I have me about an 18 inch leader that uh, is ready to go. And all I do with this is just have the hook, wrap it around three of my fingers, and then once it's like this, I'll just twist this over all three wraps, and then I'll set it in my tackle box like that. So I'll have about five of these every time I go fishing ready to go. And if for some reason I'm snagging all the time and I snap them, that's when I go to my steel leaders with the hook on there. Um, so now I'm going to show you all how I tie them to my fishing poles. Then I'll go over what kind of fishing poles I use and what I have. So let me grab one of my poles. Um, we will start with this one right here. Okay. So I have a steel leader on this because I tried to go fishing last night, didn't catch anything, too many people, too hot, all kinds of excuses I got for you. But So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. 
There we go. So now we have a pole with line, nothing attached to it. So what I do first is I use these three ounce no roll sinkers. Um, they work very well for me as far as like working at the dam or fishing at the dam. They work really good out there. And you got to make sure there's no rough edges on these. So get your clippers if you have seen any lead sticking off the edges, like right here or right here. Just clip them off or hit them with a hammer and tap them in so that they don't cut your line. Um, so there's two things I like to do. One is I'll put the string through the weight, obviously, first. Like that. Sometimes I'll put a bead right here and a small one that this string can barely fit through. I don't have any right now, so that's why I can't show you. But I'll get like a bead, kind of like, oh, I'll grab this one right here. So, kind of like this, I'll put a bead on the line and I'll explain why. So, when you go to tie your leader side on, when this is all tied right here, the weight's banging on that string. And it can cause abrasions right there on this part, and it'll just snap eventually. So you'll lose stuff. So you put that bead there, that bead protects that weight from slapping down and abrasing, abrasing the monofilament um, against the leader, or the uh, swivel, sorry, swivel is what I meant. So that's what I'll do. Is that knot that I did earlier, I'll do on this end. I'll go ahead and grab this one. So here's the one I twisted up. Go ahead and untwist it. Get it ready to go. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll, same thing as I did earlier, put it through the hole right here. Hold it between my thumb and my middle finger, there and there, like so. Stick my finger on top of the swivel, and then twist the line once, twice, three times. Then you push that through that little hole right there. And then you created another hole, so you're going to push it right back through that hole you just created. And then you pull that and hold it. And just pull it snug and tight. And then there you go. You got you a really good... Oh, look at that. It's because I didn't pull it the other way. So you got to make sure you're pulling on this little end as well as this because you just pull this it's just going to pull it out but you got to pull this side too and I, I didn't do it so now it caught on I pulled on it with my teeth which I shouldn't have done but now I've got a weak point right here because all this was rubbed against that so I'll have to cut that out and redo it but you can see how I tied on there so this is how my swivel looks then I got my weight so when I cast out this right here hits and it can cause that knot to snap sometimes. So <clears throat> here's why I like this rig. So when you cast out, this is going to go, your bait's going to follow behind screaming, la, 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 or whatever. As soon as it hits the bed, this stays flat on whatever it's on. The current flows right over it most of the time, most of the time. So if you got a real big bait on there, what's going to happen is the big bait is going to, you know, have resistance in the water and it's going to be pulling. It'll pull so much that it can sometimes pull the weight. Because um, if your line's curved or whatever, you're coming from the side, the water current's going perpendicular to you, then it'll, it'll pull that weight. Uh, but what you want is when this is out there, if you're in current, this will be flat on the bottom and then this will be down here with your bait moving. And the good thing about this is that when fish bite the hook, they pull, it doesn't move the weight. The string will move and let your, your pole know 
that you have a buy it on. I mean, that's whenever your pull starts moving. So that's that's how this works right here. So when you go to reel in, what I do is I'll reel the slack out of my pole, and then I'll just lift the tip up as I'm reeling real fast. And I just do that initially just to get that uh, this lead off of the ground in case there's rocks or something that it might be getting lodged between. Um, now circle hooks, here's the thing about circle hooks. Um, I like them because you don't have to set the hook. And sometimes I say you don't have to, I recommend you don't try to. The reason why is because circle hooks are made to basically set themselves. So fish will come, I don't have a cup out here to show you, but a fish will come and he'll bite the hook. And when he bites the hook, uh, he's pulling against this right here. So as he pulls, it's going to set itself. Whereas the mustads, they can spit it back out because it'll, it's a straight, it's just straight and straight. It's a J. So it just sets in there. It'll just set like this inside there. And then when they move a certain way, it can fall right back out. But it's the circle hook, all the tension's put on the point and the string, which is why I had you put it through the front, because when you put it in the front, you're pulling against that point. If you put the other way, you're going to be pulling this way, which can pull the hook back out. So you pull this way and it's going to set that hook inside of his lip, pull him, um, and you don't even jerk it. Like he's going to be the one that as he's going, you have your, this is why I don't like using bait clickers all the time. Leave your rods locked because that tension is what's going to set that hook. When he goes to swim off, the hook's going to go on his lip and he's, he's hooked. He's set. There's nothing he can do. And that's why I like circle hooks because if I'm busy with one and my other pole's slapping the ground, I can leave it alone and have faith that my stuff's going to hold on. Um, but that's how I set up my my rods. Ugh. Now I've heard these other rigs and I haven't tried them yet. I, I plan on doing it, but I'm gonna wait till I get my kayak to, to fish. And um, basically what you're gonna wanna get is a, a three-way swivel. So you got one here, one here, and then another one off the top. And what you would do is the top one will go to your pole, one goes to your weight, and the other goes to your bait. And basically what that does is it suspends your bait off of the ground. So if you're suspend fishing, which is really what it's good for, um, you can drop your weight all the way down to the bottom, uh, have your line tight all the way up so that these two, the one here and the one on one on top, one on bottom are straight up and down. And then your third one is slack from your bait just dangling right there and it'll be off the ground and just hanging there, you know, with any little small current that may be in the water. Um, that's that's good, too. The only thing I don't like about those is I've tried it one time. And I was losing my bait a lot because my lines just kept twisting up. So I try not to use that too much. But once I get my kayak, I think I'll probably use that more often just because it's going to be straight down. Um, so now we will get to my rods and my reels. Uh, these swivel over here so I don't lose them. I need to... So for rods, I have, believe it or not, a Shakespeare Ugly Stick Catfish Pole. I have two of them. Now these are open cast um, rods. And I do have them with my casting uh, reel. So I don't really have much problems with it at all. I really don't. Um, I have, I believe this is 25 pound test. It's 20 or 25, I can't remember. And it's the big game. Can't remember what brand it is. I'll post it in the link below. But I bought this reel at Walmart one day because uh, I was using open cast reels all the time. And I knew I used bait casting for my bass fishing and I like the bait caster. So I decided to switch for catfish. And I saw that at Walmart one day. And was like, you know what, I'm just going to try a bigger one and see how it works. So this is the one I got. It's the ATS Shakespeare. 
Uh, it's a two ball bearing. Now, one turn of this, I believe, is like 6.3 to 1. I think that means it's like 6 feet to one turn. I could be wrong. It could be 4 feet, but it's it's a big old, it's, it's a big turn. So, one turn pulls in a lot of line, and I love this reel for that reason. Uh, it also has a bait clicker, so on this side, you flip that switch, and then you set the release here, and as you heard it click, when you have a fish, it lets you know. Um, <clears throat> I'll use that sometimes if I'm walking away from the poles, I'll set that just so they can take the bait off and, you know, I don't have a whopper on there snapping my line or pulling my rod into the water. I'll have that if I have to walk away for a minute. But this is a pretty good pole. I haven't had very many problems with it. Um, it's been actually really good pole. The only thing I don't like about this is when you're going to cast. So you set the release right here. And when you set that release, watch the lever. It only drops like half turn to a quarter turn and then it locks. So you got to like go up and down until it's down at bottom and you go to cast because if you've got it up and you go to cast the momentum pushes it and it'll lock as you're flinging and your line will snap from all that weight and force flying out so I've, I've lost a couple I had to learn that on this and I lost a couple weights and hooks doing that so that's my first one. Oh, and this is a uh, seven foot medium heavy uh, Shakespeare ugly fish and I have two of these and I'm probably going to order them more because I like—I really do like them a lot. Uh, the other one I'm using was, this was a fishing pole that was given to me. It was a Walmart brand. Um, another Shakespeare rod. It was a Tiger. Shakespeare Tiger. And the, this is a casting, you can tell by the leaf holes, a casting pole. And this is also a medium heavy, but this is a 6 foot 6 inch. And I really like this one. This one feels really nice. The only thing about this one is the bites aren't as light on the tip. The tip is a lot thicker than the other one. So when you're getting bites, you don't see that that flick as much. You just see a little, just a little sway. Um, but this one works really good. I like it. Uh, it casts pretty good. Now I do have on here my uh, Abu Garcia Ambassador 6600 STX. A really good reel. Um, got it. Believe it or not, while I was at work, uh, I was driving to this this job I was doing was at this customer's house, and he actually ran a bait shop right beside his house. <clears throat> so he was like, "You want to go check out my bait shop?" And I was like, "Yeah, we'll go check it out." Because I was talking about my catfish and stuff, and um, he brought me in there, and we he showed me this reel, and he said, "I've got this reel." on sale right now it was in the winter and i guess he hadn't been making any sales and he was like i just need to get what i got for it he's like so you can buy it for uh 60 bucks i think is what he said so of course i got it for 60 but it's a hundred dollar reel so i got it for 60 dollars brand new he just didn't have the box for it um, but it, it's a it's a really good reel never had any problems with it until see i've had this for about a year and i had my first problem with it probably about two months ago. Actually, it was the first video, or the first video I have on there with the, the flathead. That flathead broke my bait clicker on this one. I don't know how or what, but when I opened it up, the, uh, the little part that clicks against the gear, it just broke, so somehow he broke it. <clears throat> but it's a really good reel. I love the feel of this one because when I'm holding this for some reason, it just feels like it's just as sensitive as holding the rod and you can feel the bites through the reel. So I really do love this reel. It's just the only thing I don't like is the ratio. I mean, you're, you got to crank that sucker to get a fish in. Uh, this is five, nine to one gear ratio. Um, this one, I have 80 pound braid and I love the braid because there's no give like on a mono, you can see it flinging like that, but on a on on braid, I mean that bite is real distinct. It's just like pow, pow. I mean it it it's hard on a braid. So uh, this 80 pound braid, I'll explain why it's important later. <clears throat> so on this 
last one I have is again my Shakespeare ugly stick. Uh, this is the uh, I ordered a pole through Amazon, the Okuma Longitude Surf Rod. It was a nine foot or seven or yeah, it was nine foot, and it was a two piece. And when it got here to my house, I only got half of it, and the half I did get the uh, little eye right here was broke up against the pole, so had to send that back and they gave me the option to get a refund or get another product. So I ordered another product because I had the money, so why not? Um, so there was a reel I had saved in my cart and it was an Okuma Classic CLX, uh, CLX, and this right here is that reel. As you can see the reel on there. Um, I really like this one, but again, kind of like the Abu Garcia, this one has the lowest gear ratio out of all my rods. It only pulls in two feet per turn. Um, that's the only disappointing thing about this. Other than that, it's really good reel. Uh, it holds, it says here, 15 pound, 510 yards, 20 pound, 420 yards, 25 pound, 310 yards. So it holds quite a bit. Um, I don't know why they didn't write the gear ratio on here. Probably because they wouldn't be able to sell it with it on there. But has this the same thing. But I like this one because you push it and it automatically just leaves everything. As far as that goes, it'll just keep swinging. It doesn't lock like the other one does. Until you push this up, then it's locked. And then your bait clicker's on this side. Uh, but on this one also, I do have 80 pound test. Uh, got me a little GoPro mount that I'm going to try for the next video when I do catch a fish. I'm going to try to get that angle of the rod bending and then, you know, reeling in the fish. See how you guys like that view. If you love that view, we'll probably get a couple more to put on the other rods. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to talk about my, uh, my braid. Let me get it real quick. All right, so the bait, the bait, the braid that I use is uh, Cast King Super Power braid line. This is the 80 pound test, 327 yards. Um, I really like it. It's done me good so far. And here's the reason why. When I first started this channel, I wanted to do kayak fishing, but my kayak is too small. Um, I have a 10 foot sun dolphin and I'm a very hefty guy, so it doesn't do very good with me. So I'm going to get me a bigger one, probably a 12, 14 footer. Uh, the one underneath it, that's my fiance's has no rod holders or anything. So I want to get one specifically for fishing. Um, so whenever I'm Putting this on my rod, guys, do not set the string down on the table and just pull while with your rod reeling it in to do that. No. I have this through a, an old wire hanger that I set like this, and then I just hang this up on my garage. Uh, I hang it, and then that way it pulls it straight out, and you don't get that curls in your, your line whenever it's sitting there. It'll come out straight. Um, <clears throat> so now we're going to get on to bait, not a dub bait, we're going to get on to bait. What I do is I go, as you can see, I've made videos for you guys going to Sooner Park and catch and perch. Well, when I catch a lot of them, I'll keep some of them live in my aquarium. I got an aquarium over here that I'll keep live with some perch in there. I don't have any in there right now because I took them with me last night and didn't catch nothing. And um, my aerator's batteries died, so all my fish died. So when they die, I'll come back and I'll freeze them. Or if I catch too many, I'll freeze them. And what I do is I'll just throw them in there alive in a big old gallon bag and I get some garlic. And if you look close in there, you can see it all in there. But there is a bunch of garlic in there. And it infuses that garlic with the perch. So when you throw it out there, catfish love garlic. Love garlic. So 
I haven't been able to put the garlic in there. Now my hands smell like it for a while, but um, this is my first batch I've done in probably about a year. So I'm excited to see how it turns out. Uh, so this here is my ultra light rod. It's a ugly stick GX2 Shakespeare. Also, I love these. I love Shakespeare as far as the rods go because they're very, they're very good. They're flexible. I mean, this is a really nice rod. This one's five feet. Um, I have on it a Zebco ZSE20, and I think I said that in one of the other videos. I put it on this and took it off my slab shaker. Uh, that rod, I'm probably going to get another one and give it to my kids because they love that one. So I'll just get another one of these, throw it on there, and then they're ready to go. So this is uh, what I use for my, my perch and my crappie whenever I go crappie fishing, which isn't very often. And I just bought this bag, which is spider wire bag. But I'm only bringing this up to show you what lures I use. So, so I watch a lot of kayak catfish with uh, Justin Johnson, I think his name is. Or, I don't know his name is Justin. I just can't remember his last name. But I watch him ultralight fish a lot. And when he's fishing, I listen to, you know, his baits because I want to know what he's using. Because he catches a lot. So I got what he gets, and he said he gets these gulp one-inch minnows. Um, gulp alive. Looks, feels, and tastes alive. They're one-inch minnows. And I got these on sale for $5.99. Um and do not do not touch this and put it in your mouth i do, i got hair in my mouth or something whenever i was there and i went like that i was like Ugh. but it was pretty bad but um, i used those with a one thirty second ounce jig head and i cannot remember the size of the hook to save the life of me but there's the jig head and I also like to use these little, uh, man, what is that brand? Oh, I got them in here. I got some more in here. I'll show you. I get a lot of good, these, uh, Bobby Garland lures right here. Um, these are two inch minnows. And I catch a lot of fish on these. A lot. This is mainly what I catch my perch on. Um, some days I'll go with hot dog. Whenever I'm really desperate, I'll just go with hot dog and I'll catch a ton of them. But if I don't want to waste hot dog, I'll just go and uh, take those out there and I'll, I'll catch. I catch quite a bit. Not as much as I would with a hot dog, but I do catch. Um, and my technique is... When I'm out there, I don't, you don't cast it and reel it in fast. A lot of people do that because they think everything's like bass. You just throw it out there and reel it in, throw it out there and reel it in. And even bass, you don't, you don't always want to do that because even though they are an aggressive fish, um, sometimes they're lazy. And when they're lazy, you got to go slow. So you'll cast out. And <clears throat> what works for me is I'll have a, a plastic worm on there, probably about a six inch worm on there, uh, six or seven inch worm. And I'll have it set weedless and I'll just cast it out and keep my tip straight to where I cast it, tighten the slack out of it, and then just raise the tip. Not while you're reeling, just, just raise the tip. And then as you come down, reel that slack back out and then raise the tip. And what happens is your bait is coming up like this and then it drops and then it comes up again and drops and usually on that drop is when the fish will take it <clears throat> so that's what's worked for me in the past years and I've got some pictures I will post up to show you the fish I caught when I was younger um, when I used to bass fish I loved catching bass but I just got kind of tired of it I guess <clears throat> and wanted to try something different so what I do with my jigs is I'll cast them out and I'll let them hit bottom. I'll wait till they hit bottom 
and once they hit bottom, and they do take a while to hit bottom if you're using a 132nd ounce because it, it goes real slow. And usually when that first cast, when it drops, that's when you're going to get your bite. And if not, what I do is I'll twitch it, do a little real twitch, do a little real twitch. And what's that doing is the minnow, we get on the bottom and stop and then twitch, stop, and then twitch, stop. And uh, that'll, that'll entice the fish a little bit. Um, I mean, everybody has their own techniques. I'm just telling you what works for me here in Oklahoma, uh, northeastern Oklahoma, because mm -hmm. I, I know one let what works at one lake isn't going to work in another lake usually. Um, but I'm just telling you what works for me. You can try these techniques out. But I just thought I would give uh, you guys a little bit of a rundown of what I do, how I use my rods, uh, how I set them up, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe uh, I'll do some bass fishing again just to show you all what I do for bass fishing if you want that. If you do, just leave me some comments. Let me know that you're interested in seeing some bass fishing. And uh, I'll, I'll get my, my bass rod out, which is hanging over there on the wall. And uh, I'll go do some bass fishing and, and show you all what I can catch with it. But uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching my channel. Uh, like and subscribe. Be sure and share with all your friends and family. And remember, I do have apparel now. I've got hats. I've got, well, the hats, I, I've got to figure out how I'm going to sell those. Because right now, you just got to order them individually through a store. And it, that's kind of hard for me. It's too costly. So i got to find a store that will make them in bulk. And then uh, sell them that way. Um, but then I do have another one. It's at, uh, the link is below. Just Go below and look at the link and you can get shirts, uh, yoga pants or tights for girls, um, hoodies, stickers, all that kind of stuff. So um, <clears throat> really enjoyed you guys hanging out. There's my stickers right there, Mungie Fishing. And uh, I hope to make many more videos with you guys. Anyway, guys, if you have any requests or anything you want to see or anything you want to do, just let me know and uh, I'll be sure and get to it. But just want to thank you one more time for watching Mungie Fishing and you guys have a great day.